The term biotechnology refers to the use of living organisms to modify human health and the environment. Throughout history, we have learned a great deal about the different organisms that our ancestors used so effectively. Increased technology has helped biologists study the organism's cell structure and function, and they have found ways to use these organisms even more effectively than our ancestors. However, biologists must have a basic understanding of cells and their many functions before manipulating their gene expression for our benefit. Understanding what makes up a cell and how the cell works is fundamental to all of the biological sciences. A cell is the smallest unit of life and the building block of all living organisms. Appreciating the similarities and differences between cell types within and among organisms is particularly important to the fields of cell biology and molecular biology. Molecular biology can be confusing because it is a subject that focuses on things so small you cannot even see them. So let's begin with big organisms and work down to the molecular level. Organisms, such as a little girl, are made up of organ systems, such as the digestive system, pictured here. Each of these organ systems are comprised of individual organs. As shown in the diagram, organs such as the liver, the stomach, and the small and large intestines are part of the digestive system. All of these organs are made up of tissues. Tissues are a group of similar cells that perform the same functions, such as the epithelial tissue and the smooth muscle tissue pictured here. Tissues are made up of cells, and a cell is the smallest unit of life. Finally, cells contain organelles and molecules such as DNA. Let's examine a cell more closely. There are two general classifications of cells, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotes are single-celled organisms and include bacteria and some algae. On the other hand, eukaryotic cells make up more complex organisms, like plants and animals. Prokaryotic cells lack a membrane-bound nucleus, so the DNA, which is usually a single circular molecule, floats in the cytoplasm of the cell. Eukaryotic cells contain a membrane-bound nucleus that holds all of the DNA in one part of the cell, as well as many other organelles. Now let's look at the function of each organelle in a eukaryotic cell. To gain an understanding of the inner workings of the cell, it's helpful to think of the cell as a mini-city. Just like in a city, a cell is made up of many parts that have their own functions. In the cell, these parts are called organelles, which are explained next. A plasma cell membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. The bilayer surrounds the cell, protecting it, and functions as a gate that allows molecules into and out of the cell. In our city, the cell membrane would be like a large fence surrounding the city that only allows certain molecules to go in and out of the cell. The nucleus is like the capital building of the city because it functions as the control center of the cell and houses the genetic information or instructions for what the cell is supposed to do. The mitochondria functions as the powerhouse of the cell by producing the energy the cell needs to perform its duties. This is just like a power plant providing energy for a city to use. The energy currency of the cell is ATP. The ribosomes act as factories which translate the genetic information, or DNA, from the nucleus into usable protein molecules. Proteins do the work in the cell. The Golgi functions as the post office in the cell and packages and modifies the proteins. The endoplasmic reticulum is the highway of the cell. It forms an interconnected network of tubules and vesicles and functions to transport proteins throughout the cell. So those protein-containing vesicles would be like the trucks on the highways of our city. Many of the protein-producing ribosomes are located on the endoplasmic reticulum. The lysosome is the trash man of the cell because it digests excess or worn-out organelles and proteins by breaking them down and removing them. There are actually two types of eukaryotic cells, animal cells and plant cells. Both types of cells are very similar, but there are three distinct differences. First, plant cells have a cell wall surrounding the plasma cell membrane. Animal cells just have a cell membrane. Secondly, there is often just one large central vacuole found in plant cells, whereas animal cells have a few small ones. The vacuole stores molecules needed by a cell and also isolates material that may be harmful to the cell. The final difference is plant cells have an additional organelle called a chloroplast. 
The chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis in a plant cell. Photosynthesis is the process of capturing sunlight and synthesizing glucose and oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. Photosynthesis is one of the most important biochemical pathways since nearly all life on Earth depends on photosynthesis as a source of energy. Animals metabolize the glucose from a plant source to produce ATP, the energy currency of the cell. Recall that all organisms need energy to do cellular processes. Do you remember which organelle is the powerhouse that generates ATP energy? That's right, it's the mitochondria. Many different types of plants and animal cells are grown and studied in biotechnology labs. Cells can be manipulated by pharmaceutical companies to produce proteins to treat diseases such as diabetes and anemia.